Hi everyone, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. In this video, I'm going to give you an intro to acid and hydrides, as well as make a spectacular demonstration of an acid and hydride later on. But first, let's learn a little bit about acid and hydrides and what they are. Now, as it kind of sounds like, an hydride sounds like anhydrous, which means lack of water, or means that you've taken water out of something. Now, acid and hydrides are essentially what happens when you take water out of acids. For instance, let's take acetic acid, which looks like this. We have acetic acid, and we have an OH group. Now that's almost a water. So what happens when we take two acetic acids and put them back to back and try and take a water out of these? Well, what we get, we can find water right here as an OH and an H. So we take those out and we end up with this compound right here known as acetic anhydride. Kind of neat, huh? So anyway, by dehydrating acids, we can form their anhydrides, and this works also in reverse, that by adding water to anhydrides, we can convert them back to their acids. Now, lots of anhydrides exist. For instance, we'll take nitric acid, which the basis is nitrogen, and we have a little aromatic bond here. That's nitric acid, and if we take two nitric acids and we dehydrate them with, like, phosphorus pentoxide or something, we get um, nitric anhydride, which looks something like this. which is N2O5, very powerful nitrating agent, and of course adding water to that brings us back to nitric acid. Um, another important one is sulfuric anhydride, which is not really called that, it's called oleum, and that happens when you mix sulfuric acid, which looks like this, that's sulfuric acid, plus oleum, which is SO3, and you get sulfuric anhydride. Now, this is an interesting equation here because when you dissolve so oleum or when you dissolve sulfur trioxide into sulfuric acid, you get a compound known as oleum, and that's essentially over percent sulfuric acid because what happens is this equilibrium here is established between the sulfur trioxide dissolved in the sulfuric acid and this crazy compound here, the sulfuric anhydride or uh, what is it? S2O7. It's like pyrosulfuric acid. Anyway, um, and so when you put water, when you mix water with this oleum, um, the anhydride converts to more sulfuric acid. So you don't actually dilute the sulfuric acid, you just reduce the overall amount of sulfur trioxide dissolved in it. So you can use, um, it's essentially like 110 or 120 percent sulfuric acid because you could add 20 percent weight, uh, 20 weight percent water to it and it would still remain 100 percent sulfuric acid. So that's a little lesson on oleum. But anyway, we're going to be making a very special anhydride today that a lot of people on YouTube like to make. Now let me get another piece of paper. What we are going to do is first make an acid and then make its anhydride. The acid we're going to make is uh, very special and actually is very unstable and uh, doesn't exist uh, except in very, very tiny quantities. So let's pretend, uh, let's go back to our old video where I made the, nit the nitric acid and show you how that was done. Um, let's try potassium nitrate plus sulfuric acid yielded us potassium sulfate plus nitric acid, right? So by adding an acid to a salt, we get the corresponding salt and an acid. So today what we're going to do is use potassium permanganate plus sulfuric acid to give us permanganic acid and potassium sulfate. Now, permanganic acid actually doesn't exist um, except in very, very tiny quantities in an equilibrium because it's very unstable. And instead, what happens is that the sulfuric acid, which acts as a dehydrating agent, dehydrates the permanganic acid to permanganic anhydride, which looks like this. Remember how the anhydrides look? It's like two acids bonded together with an oxygen. There. And if we count this, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 oxygen. So we have MN2O7, or manganese heptoxide. Now everyone calls it manganese heptoxide because permanganic anhydride sounds long and boring. But um, as it turns out, this is exactly how manganese heptoxide comes about, and this is what, why that happens. So anyway, uh, we're going to make some manganese heptoxide because, as you know, uh, manganese in the plus 7 oxidation state um, it's kind of unstable, get, wants to give away a lot of its oxygen, and will do so 
very simply um, in the presence of organic compounds, which will of course oxidize the organic compounds and reduce the manganese, uh, manganese heptoxide to manganese dioxide in a spectacularly violent reaction. So we are going to go to the lab and do that right now. Okay, so for the manganese heptoxide, or the uh, permanganic anhydride as it were, we need a small amount of potassium permanganate, which we'll place on a glass plate. And to the potassium permanganate, we'll add a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Don't drop the cap. All right. And this will instantly convert the potassium permanganate to permanganic acid, and then quickly also manganese heptoxide or permanganic anhydride. And this kind of manifests itself as a greenish colored oil. And you can see it here. It's uh, supposedly deep red, but it's green in contact with sulfuric acid for some reason. Anyway, it's very reactive with anything organic. So I'm going to set my stirring rod down. I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit so I can, oops, so I can back up my tripod. And what we're going to do is I have here uh, ethylene glycol, aka 1,2-ethene diol, or ethane diol. And uh, we're going to add a drop of this ethane diol, which is an oily, um, sort of viscous, clear liquid, onto the manganese heptoxide and see what happens. Now, because it wants to give up its oxygen so fast, we should expect to see the ethane diol oxidize very quickly. And usually oxidations take place as uh, combustion reactions, so we shall see what happens. Let me get the excess off this pipette. All right. And here we go. And the brown ash that you see falling down is actually uh, manganese dioxide, or MnO2 as the manganese is reduced and the ethane diol is oxidized. Now that one was kind of spectacular, but there are much better ones that you can do. Um, I'm going to clean this up and then we'll try methanol. All right, I'm preparing a new sample. we go. Now remember to always be very careful with concentrated sulfuric acid because, uh, for instance, have a look at this uh, popsicle stick which I like to use as lab spatulas because they're nice and disposable and they come in large packs, but if I get sulfuric acid on it, notice that it instantly carbonizes and it will eat right through this popsicle stick. It's very potent stuff. Anyway, so here I have my bottle of uh, Mm, should be anhydrous methanol. I've distilled it over a, a desiccating agent. And I'm going to get some in this pipette over here. And then we're going to drop it onto the manganese heptoxide. And we should expect a more violent reaction because methanol is not only uh, much more flammable because of its lower flash point, uh, but also should be more reactive since it's a smaller, simpler alcohol. So here we go. As you can see, clearly, um, we've set everything on fire over here, including the popsicle stick. But that was a very violent reaction indeed. So anyway, that was manganese heptoxide. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something about acid and hydrides. I know I did. And uh, subscribe, rate, and comment.